The zebrafish, or Danio rario, is a small fish related to the minnow. Named after the prominent black and white striped pattern of the adults, it's native to southeastern Himalayan region and found in parts of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal and Burma. It's commonly found in small shoals in streams, but also likes slow-moving or stagnant water habitats such as canals, ditches, ponds and rice paddies. It's omnivorous and eats zooplankton, insects, insect larvae and phytoplankton. The fish prefer clean, oxygen-rich water with some vegetation and a temperature of around 18 to 25 degrees centigrade. The fish can live up to five years old, with fully grown adults reaching about six centimetres in length. The females are larger and fatter than the smaller, sleeker males. And the fish like to live in shoals of never fewer than six to eight fish. In fact, the fish is now commonly found way beyond its natural habitat in Asia. It is also found wild in parts of the USA, Australia and Colombia, presumably having been deliberately or inadvertently released from fish farms or by amateur enthusiasts. It has indeed long been popular amongst aquarium enthusiasts the world over due to its hardiness, cold resistance and facility of breeding. Indeed over the years selective breeding has created numerous different strains including long finned, albino, golden, sandy and leopard variants. However, the zebrafish is also now used almost ubiquitously as a model species, one of that group of organisms which are useful for modelling and understanding human biological processes. Particularly useful strains now in this field include the so-called glowfish, patented strains of zebrafish that include a UV fluorescent protein marker. Here at the Royal Hallamshire Hospital, a medical genetics team from the University of Sheffield's Department of Infection and Immunity are using zebrafish as part of their research into gene expression during the human body's response to infection and inflammation. I'm Joe and I'm a PhD student here at the University of Sheffield. The zebrafish provides an ideal tool for studying a wide range of human diseases, including Alzheimer's disease and chronic inflammatory diseases such as arthritis. Inflammation is the body's basic response to tissue injury, so every time you cut your knee or scrape your elbow, an inflammatory response is activated. And one of the main functions of this is to destroy any bacteria that get into your body through this. The zebrafish provide a great tool for studying these diseases because the genetics is a lot more similar to humans than Drosophila, the fruit fly, another model organism. They also have a short generation time, which allows large numbers to be used in a short period of time. And they are very genetically manipulable, allowing us to knock out genes or inhibit them. In our lab, we're using a particular strain of the zebrafish, which uses green fluorescent protein to tag neutrophils, which are a particular type of white blood cell important in the inflammatory, inflammatory response. The zebrafish larvae are transparent, and this combined with their genetic manipulability allows us to mark certain cell types with fluorescent proteins, including the green fluorescent protein, which is, uh, originally came from jellyfish. So this green fluorescent protein is really important as it allows us to visually track these neutrophils as they move towards the site of inflammation inside of the zebrafish. We were able to study these processes in vivo in the zebrafish in a way that isn't possible in humans. One of the things with using the zebrafish as a model organism is that we have to keep them healthy. And one of the most important things is feeding them. And zebrafish are fed brine shrimp and they get fed twice a day during the week by the aquarium staff and then me and my fellow PhD students have to come in in turns at the weekend to feed them. And that's a bit of a downer. Zebrafish are thus an extremely useful model species for studies into vertebrate development and gene function. Other teams using this technique include that at Ludwig Maximilian University in Munich. Under the guidance of Dr. Bettina Schmidt, the focus of their research is Alzheimer's disease. With its relatively large clutch sizes and short life cycles of around three to four months, Danio, the zebrafish, is now widely used in such experiments and regimes for the optimal reproduction and sustenance of fish are shared amongst the research community, as seen here in an extract from a video on the Journal of Video Experimentation website. Fish tanks should be cleaned regularly. To clean a fish tank, close the water flow to this tank, drain excess water by tilting the tank backwards and remove the tank carefully from the system. With the many genetic strains now available, the zebrafish are providing a really important tool in biomedical research and I don't know how we ever got by without them.
With the potential inclusion of a zebrafish-based experiment in a forthcoming science mission to the International Space Station, this tiny fish certainly has come a long way from its remote Southeast Asian origins.